What do you get when DigiKey sends us one exciting new part and no limitations? We're about to find out. We're Tamar Lab, a tech innovation studio based in New York City. Since 2010, we've helped startups and global brands turn bold ideas into real hardware that people actually use. And this is Potentially Genius, a series created in partnership with DigiKey. Together, we tap into their massive library of components to see what we can build around a single part. DigiKey is the trusted source that accelerates progress for every designer, buyer, and builder. Beyond just parts, they deliver expertise, tools, and resources that help guide you from concept to finished project. And in this episode, we'll put that promise to the test as we turn a featured component into something totally unexpected and potentially even genius. In this episode of Potentially Genius, we're going to meet with... My name is Abhijit Patil. I'm Senior Product Marketing of Piece of Four Devices with Infineon. It's great to see you, Abhijit. Uh, what have you brought us today? Today, we are going to talk about Piece of Four Multisense, combining capacitive sensing, inductive sensing, liquid level sensing on a single chipset. That's really cool. I can see this being super applicable to our day-to-day -day work. To show it off in this episode, I think we're going to try and come up with something maybe a tiny bit more fun or silly. Looking at your previous work, I'm really intrigued to see what you guys can do with Multisense. Yeah, we're thrilled. This is a, a perfect sensor for our team to play with. It sounds like you've given us a lot of really great tools to make sure that we can develop something real and something cool. We'll be busy working and schedule a follow-up call to reveal what we've made to you. So Dylan, you've had this kit now for about a week and have started to play with it. Tell us about what we got and what it can do. This is the PSOC 4000T sensor kit. The actual MCU is on this board here, and it has this header that allows you to plug in these different sensor boards. There's actually inductive coils built into the PCB, and they detect the deflection of these metal plates, and that allows these metal plates to act as touch sensors. The cool thing is that it can get wet, it doesn't matter, it just detects force. How programmable is it? Like, can we customize it? We can actually use their software to tune these existing coils to whatever metal we end up using as the touch service. Nice, okay, so we'd remove this metal and put on our own. Exactly. Okay, great. Um, the first idea was a minimalist lamp where maybe the buttons are hidden onto the products and we can really take advantage of this being like sheet metal and then integrate it onto something else. I mean, I like the lamp idea a lot. And I think there's a lot of potential there. We just have to find reasons to show off that it's different from a capacitive touch sensor, which you could make a lamp with pretty easily. Not a lot of lamps are outdoor lamps where it's like exposed to water. Exactly. Right? So outdoor lighting can work. Yeah. And you could almost combine the first two ideas, right? Of like a lamp with some outdoor footage. Mm -hmm. Not very often do we see a metal button and one that really has no mechanical components. It's different from capacitive sensing where it is actually measuring deflection in a piece of metal. So you can use it with gloves on, it can be covered in water, it can work through actual metal which capacitive sensing can't. So it's a touch sensor that has some unique applications. This inductive coil can sense the motion. It does that by using the properties of electromagnetism to induce an eddy current in this piece of metal and then detecting the change in that magnetic field in response. We thought as an interface that was really cool because you have the materiality of metal and you can press on metal but also have it be you know a polished piece of brass as your, your interface or, or etch on it or that sort of thing. And we thought maybe that would be a good controller for lighting of some sort. So eventually we refined that to be a camping lantern because that is something that you can use with gloves on, it's rugged, you can waterproof it. I've gone camping once, but then I ended up sleeping in the car. So no, I actually haven't used camping lights. I'm more of like a city girl. I like fluorescent lighting. <laughs> so once I landed on that, I started adding more detail to it, um, thinking about the way it was constructed, how this piece of metal might be inset into the plastic housing and screwed on from the back, um, where the light would come out from a window on the front and the touch panel on the back so you would control the brightness up and down by touching the back of it and hang it on a hook. Different methods of construction, even some ideas where the light came out the side. Eventually I realized that this shape would be kind of hard to bend. It's easier with a press brake to do two discrete bends and have uh, a three-sided shape. So that led to 
this direction. Uh, for the whole thing is a flat sandwich that makes assembly really easy and from a design perspective you can stack all the circuit boards in a row. At this point I was about ready to move into 3D modeling. Before diving into the 3D model we wanted to check out LED options on DigiKey. With so many options available we knew we'd be able to find exactly what we needed to match the design. I decided to, based on these sketches, simplify it into a hook and a body. I wanted to push this form a little further. I wasn't really sure where the light was going to come out. At first, we weren't sure how it hangs or if it stands, but this this is pretty clear to a user that like it hangs this way. You pull it out, you know, hang it somewhere, and then you can turn it off, turn it on, and then pick it back up and keep it with the rest of your year. This was the first kind of more refined version. So the idea with this is it would fire downwards. You could sort of use it as a task light. This was side firing. This is cool, but I wanted to try a front-facing one also. We ended up here. So this, I really like. Um, it's a little cleaner. It's this flat shape. The interface is on the back. You touch here and here for like, brightness control, and then uh, the light just comes out through the front. I'm going to 3D print this to check the scale. What do you think? I like it. Now I have to take this and turn it into a small form factor that can actually fit in our light. The way I'm doing that is taking this board and cramming it together so that the coils are on one side and we can detect our button pushes here and then the dev board is neatly in place on the other side. Sandwiched together like this, it's small enough to fit into our light. For this project, we ordered a warm LED strip with a high density of LEDs, magnet wire to connect the LED board to the dev board, a battery, Nail headers, which we used to sandwich the two dev boards together, and a battery charger that was used to charge the battery and add a USB-C port to the project. And with DigiKey's fast turnaround, those parts will be on our bench in no time at all. Now that we have all the components from DigiKey, it's time to start our final assembly. The first thing would be countersinking, so that just allows us to make the screw heads flat with the surface. I think that's good. So there's going to be a housing and a mounting plate. The PCB sits in the housing. PCB inside, mounting plate, squishes it all together. It sandwiches it really close to the face so that the sensor is really up against this face, which then has the sheet metal part. And it will look something like this. And then you'll see that there's four holes for thread forming screws, and they'll actually engage with these bosses on the mounting plate, and that's going to sandwich those three pieces in. So the housing, the sheet metal, and the mounting plate are all going to squish together with these thread forming screws. That's flush. Oh yeah. Now that we've taken our aluminum plate and assembled it onto our prototype, we can actually calibrate the button for our aluminum plate. To do this, we use CapSense Tuner, which is a part of Modus Toolbox. And now we're actually streaming data from the dev board to CapSense Tuner. As you can see here, I have to press this button really hard to actually get the result I'm looking for, and we want to change that. Here we can go to the signal to noise ratio measurement section, and what we're going to do is select a button. That's this one. And the first thing we do is acquire noise. That allows the device to know what the button looks like when you're not pushing it. Once that wraps up, we can then acquire the signal. After I click acquire signal, I'm gonna push on the button with a reasonable amount of force. And I'm gonna to try to hold it as well as I can. There we go. So that passed. Now CapSense Tuner knows how much force to look for when I'm pushing the button. Alrighty. So Dylan's working on attaching the charge PCB um, to the rest of the circuit to make it rechargeable. Boom. Dylan has half brightness, blinking, full brightness as the mode options. That's a lot better than before. I was able to transfer our button design from the vinyl to these transfer tapes. Now I'm going to transfer from the transfer tape to our metal face. Nice. And I take a bone folder and I just really make sure it's on there. It's glow in the dark, right? It is glow in the dark. I wonder if you can see it though. Can you see it? Oh yeah, I see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's there faintly. Cool. Now we're gonna attach the rest of the housing with a few different lens options that we have. This one Jesse made where 
it really hides the LEDs. This one has like a little etched pattern that maybe helps us diffuse the light a little better. And our gray translucent with a rough texture um, hopefully also makes it diffuse. So we'll, we'll attach it and see which one's the best of the three. Amazing. Looks good. All right. The LED is meant to go in the wall of the housing, but I think we should tape these components down first. Right, and I should probably enable the oh, yeah. power supply. How'd you do that? I just soldered a bridge um, between the enable pin and ground yeah. so that it didn't flash on while we were assembling it. Okay. This enamel wire was actually soldered directly to the LED pins on the dev kit which luckily had a MOSFET already included, so no extra hardware was needed to drive it. Now all that's left to do is close it up, see if it fits, and then make this permanent. Do you want to do the honors? Let's do it together. Cool. What if I'm camping with gloves on and it's really cold and I want to use my camping light? Boom. Boom. It's always fun. It's always really cool. I mean, that that's like literally the reason I do this is just because when I was a kid making shit, I would just kind of, you know, build something and it works. And I'm like, oh my God, it works. And, you know, I'd be riding that high for days. Oh, so. sweet. Yeah. Dude, this is epic. I really, I like the lens and option that we chose. I think this is cool that this worked out as well. There you go. Hi, Abidjit. How's it going? Pretty good, Ted. Good to see you guys again. Um, how was the summer for you? It's been a fun summer full of making and hot weather. We want to share with you this idea we're calling the camp lamp. Okay. <laughs> One here as well. It's a really sort of thin profile, simple uh, device that has a uh, metallic uh, sheet metal and that's used both as a way to hang it and carry it but it's also used as the switch so I can demonstrate here we have different modes so there's a pulse mode there's also a bright and, and dimmed mode as well these are all controlled by just presses on the back we have an on off button and then a mode change button so this works with gloves on if your hands are busy you could use your your head or your knee it's not affected by rain or snow and it's pretty durable, right? I can sort of like just like knock on it, probably drive a car over it, and it still still works. The first question looking at it I have is where can I order one for myself? This looks really, really good. It captures the true advantages of inductive sensing, being outdoor in the environment, have the nice user interface. Excited to have others try their own versions with the dev kit that you've provided. Um, they could start to experiment with their own inductive designs right out of the box. One of the things we always say with the multi-sense is possibilities are endless, and you guys are really capturing and, and proving that point. What you have done here is, is truly amazing. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you to our friends at DigiKey. Please be sure to visit the DigiKey YouTube channel to see our past episodes.